Hi, Byron. Thank you again for being with me and for making it to this a Wise Factor chat. As I was telling you before, I was talking to your former mentor, Tim, who said, this is a really cool guy. I want you to talk to him and I couldn't wait. So you're back from your vacation. And while you're back from your vacation, I wanted to get a hold of you. So thank you again. I'm going to go, as I told you, through some questions. They're very simple, but I really want to know your journey from when you started your firm and forward okay. than when you found WISE. So let's go from the beginning. When did measured results start? Well, my first firm started in 1985. Okay, that was Byron McBroom CPA. Mm. And I did that for about, I don't know, till 2002, sold it. I was going to go into something else. And then 9-11 happened and wiped out that market. So I started back up again with this time measured results. And so it started in about 2002. And I had always bumbled along with about four or five guys. You know, it was the basic everything they talk about at WISE where someone can handle a million dollars worth of business. And then, but my philosophy was that I always liked to play a lot because I had a boat and I skied. I ride bikes a lot. I was very active with my kids. And so I wanted a lot of free time. So my business always hovered around, you know, 750,000 at the time. Now, keep in mind, this is 20 years ago. So it's yeah. probably equivalent to 1.2, 1.3 million. And my goal really wasn't to grow. It was just to have a good life and have lots of fun. Okay. Then what happened is in about 2016, my son became old enough and he wanted to be a CPA. So he was going to become a partner. So I said, we got to grow this thing. We can't just take the same firm and split it between two people. Then we're both, you know, splitting the pot. We got to grow it so we can have a bigger pot. So we started marketing and we actually found out that we were pretty doggone good at it. We started off by giving speeches at real estate offices and every speech I'd give, I'd get one or two clients from it. Average fee was about $10,000 a piece. And so we grew, I gave 30 speeches that year. So wow. we grew up about three or four, you know, we grew actually a lot. And, you know, we had all the growing pains that went along with it. And when I was in my 750, just so everybody puts that in reference, that was a team of five. It was myself who acted as the manager, the client manager. My son acted as the senior production manager. And then we had a bookkeeper. And then we had, you know, basically one offshore bookkeeper. And then we had a receptionist just to give everybody a frame of reference for what we had. So I think the first year we grew from 700, 650 or so, we grew up to a million. The next year we grew from a million to 1.6 million. At the same time, my son started dabbling in Instagram and Facebook and all this stuff. And actually we became very, very good at it. He actually ended up getting up to over a million followers on Instagram. That's awesome. I think 900, a million followers. Yeah, I think 900,000 of them were from Pakistan you know, because they were all paid. <laughs> so they weren't that good. But I probably had, I think you probably had about 100,000 real followers. But we started getting, instead of giving speeches where I had to drive for an hour, give a speech, fight traffic coming home. Yeah. We started getting people calling from Instagram and it really started to flow with all the, and then we found out a really good way to market is doing what we call mastermind programs. And this is what I currently do. You just join a mastermind program and let's say it's a real estate mastermind program and go hang out with all the people with a lot of money and you get clients from it. Okay. So we ended up getting to where our marketing was generating around $1.2 million a year in new business, which is pretty good growth. And considering that would be a whole year's worth of business. Yeah. We also met a guy and we became partners, joint venture partners with Tony Robbins. Wow. And so we, we would go to all of the business mastery programs and we would sit in the little back room. Tony would mention us and it opened the doors for a break and there'd be a tsunami wave of people sprinting to make an appointment with me. Wow. You know, so we ended up, we always wanted Tony to be only 50% of our growth. So we'd actually grow a million and a quarter on Tony and then a million and a quarter with our own marketing. We were just vomiting clients. I mean, 
we actually, at one point in time, we said we have too much to do. And so we're going to raise our prices, which we did. And then we also had to fire it. We fired a whole bunch of clients. We upgraded the firm. One of the great things we did was we let the employees pick who they wanted to fire. And they just loved it because they got rid of all the people that were jerks. You know, a lot of times people, they'll kiss the owner of the firm's butt, but they're rude to the employees. Yeah. And so we got rid of all those people. We got rid of all the people who didn't pay promptly. We got rid of, I mean, my accounts receivable, back in my old days, I used to be a specialist with people with tax problems. And I was running 200 days of accounts receivable because the people didn't have no money. Now with the new firm, I got my receivables nine days right now. You know, and that doesn't even count the people who we make pay in advance. So we're probably at zero days, accounts receivable. But anyway, we got up, we kept growing and we growing and we growing. And you know, clients with, only. with all these clients, and we got up to, I think we got up to almost 40 to, I think it was 40 to 50 people. Wow. And it was just a lot of discombobulation over and over and over again. And it was funny what had happened. We went back and say, okay, how are we going to manage this? Because managing a 750 or a million dollar firm is way different than managing a, a $5 million firm. Because we were up almost to $5 million when that happened. I think about 4.5 and then we grew to five. And what I realized is that we were the most effective when we were a team of five or six. You know, all the customers were getting weighted on properly. All the the phone calls were getting returned. The, yeah. We were intimately familiar with the clients. And so what we did is we basically figured out that this is the wise method, but we figured it out. The deep and narrow and, deeper. And so then we figured out, we broke up all these teams. And then at that point in time, I stumbled upon wise mentoring's ads. This is probably, I don't know, two and a half, three years ago. You know, they didn't have very many U.S. guys, I think, at the time. Yeah. But we had also hired 12 people offshore. We actually, at that point in time, had about 18 offshore. Now we have 12. But it was just a lot to manage. And then I bumbled upon the wise stuff. And I was just so joyous and happy because this basically, they it was basically CPA in a box. Yeah. That for me, it was all my organization in a box. And I don't know if you can tell from talking to me, but I'm a people person. I'm not a behind the scenes person. And it was coming up with all these strategies. I just had to implement it. I'm a good implementer, but it, awesome. I just basically took the wise mentoring system and said, told my team, this is how we're going to do it. And so we implemented all the systems and, and made everything work. My son eventually left and started his own firm in Florida. Oh, and wow. basically I have about right now, currently I have about a $3 million firm and I have three teams through tax season last year. I probably work 10 hours a week. I golf three days a week. You know, I ride, I snow ski, you know, hopefully about 20 to 30 days a year, which is during tax season. And so this systematic way of pulling yourself out of the business is you, you everybody who's listening to this needs to embrace that with full. It yeah. just makes it so much easier. Yeah. That's where I sit today. And we did the one-on-one -on -one coaching and that was very, very helpful. We've implemented the Fab Five because now you can look at it and see what's working and what's not working. Like we do a bonus system to pay. Industry average for a CPA firm is about 25%. And I pay my team a bonus of 50% of the EBITDA over industry average. That wow. way they they make a profit. Because if we make excess profits, it's not because of me, it's because of my team. And this yeah. is a way to, for them to make extra profits too. Yeah, that's amazing. So- it's been a fun ride. Yeah, I wanted to ask you. So I love that you were very aligned with building a business that runs without you. You actually were like the flesh and bones of building a business that runs without you and beginning with the end in mind, which are two very important principles mm -hmm. and wise. So I wanted to ask you, when you thought about growing and all of this was happening, did you see yourself out of the business or just 10 hours per week? When I started growing this, yeah, exactly. I always had a saying, and I remember one time I was at a, a sales seminar. It was a, a two-year deal. We were learning how to sell to other CPAs, not how to sell to other CPAs. We were learning how to sell to customers. And I told everybody at the table or in the room, 
that we have an expression at my firm that said, Byron doesn't do anything. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when I sign work up to do, I try not to sell work that Byron has to do. You know, I'll speak of myself in the third person here. But so when I'm, a lot of times there's really complex issue situations where you can help a client out, but it's work that I have to do. We don't hardly take that on anymore. Or you break it down into small segments so that somebody in your firm can do it. In my marketing plans, I don't try to sell things that I have to do. Just because I'm not trying to sell myself a job. I'm trying to just, you know, just trying to make work that my team can do. So when you're designing your marketing program, always design work that can be done by your team. Remember one time I asked Ed what his ideal client was. Because you go to some of these people pushing these seminars on how to grow your business. They want to get you into doing CFO consulting. Or they want to get you into doing, you know, profit improvement. Problem with all that is, and I'll give you a, a real life example with me in a minute. But the problem with that is work that Byron has to do. And then I'm just buying a job where when we were doing Tony Robbins, we were doing CFO work, fractional CFO work. And I had, a, I had about 20 active clients and I would meet with those people one day a month. And it was, you know, or two days a month, it was 1500 bucks. I was making about 750 to 1500 bucks an hour, which is a good hourly rate. But the problem with that is there was no leverage on that work. Yeah. You know, it was an easy. ideal client is someone that pays me 10 or 12,000 bucks. And I talk to them for maybe two hours a year. I'm I'm really making, you know, six to $7,000 an hour on that work. Where if I have CFO work and let's say I'm making 1500 bucks for an hour worth of work, it's still only 1500 because there's no follow-up work that my team does. It's all Byron. Yeah. So I like staying with the rank and file. I remember one time I asked Ed what his favorite client was, you know, Mm -hmm. because everybody always loves the big clients. Oh, this guy's paying me $50,000. One time I had a world famous client and I used to pay all of his bills and everything. And this is back 20 years ago, but he used to pay me $60,000 a year. So equivalent to 120, but I had to do about half the work. So it just was sucking all my time. Well, Ed told me his favorite client was the guy with an S corporation and a 1040. And he never, he didn't even hardly know who he was. Okay. Uh-huh. That's his favorite client. <laughs> Which uh-huh. I thought, okay, we were in the process because our firm was so growing so fast. Mm-hmm. We were making an $8,000 minimum to be a client of our firm. And I realized we've made a big mistake by doing that because it eliminated all the people that there's leverage on. And that was who I should have been pushing to. I should have been getting rid of all the $50,000 people and keeping it with the $8,000 people, you know, $8,000 or less. Totally. Exactly. Like all of these clients that require lots of your time, they're basically not your ideal. If your dream is to withdraw, there Mm -hmm. are from owners who actually want to sit down with clients and do that because they love it. But at the end of the day is beginning with the end in mind. And if you're not sure that you want to live a life where you have to work seven hours a day, eight hours a day or plus, because honestly, Most CPAs tax season, is plus. <laughs> yeah, talk about tax season, a 10 hour tax season. That's thriving yeah. to Byron. That was insane. I golf three days a week through tax season this year. <laughs> That's beautiful. But think also. When you look at what generates a firm in value, what generates value if you're going to sell your business, which is more value, a firm where the owner works 10 hours a week or a firm where the owner works 70 hours a week? You know, obviously it's the one that works 70 hours a week. This last year, I had a 38% EBITDA, so 38% to my profit before my salary, and I worked 10 hours a week. I mean, it didn't get much better than that. Yeah, that's amazing, actually. And and I know that many firm owners who are probably looking at this video or listening to us on the podcast probably are thinking that that's the life they want. And it's not a tale. It's not a fairy tale. It happens to people like mm-hmm. Byron, happens to people like Jamie. Actually, you remind me a lot of Jamie's journey. So I am, <laughs> I can see that you guys have worked a lot together. Well, when I first started, I had... I felt pretty special because I had Ed, Jamie, and Tim as my coaches. Wow. And pretty soon, Ed disappeared pretty quick. (laughs) Yeah. Jamie hung around a little bit longer. And then they were struggling. I said, Tim, Tim, we get more done when I just talk to you. (laughs) 
<laughs> because then we get we get into the nuts and bolts of it. So Tim's been very, very helpful. High shout out to Tim. Yeah. Thank you, Tim. You've been an amazing mentor to Byron. And here's mm -hmm. everything that he learned. So he's golfing three days a week in tax season. As you mm -hmm. can see, he learned a thing or two. But I think you also had it in you, Byron. And kudos to you for living the life you wanted to live from the beginning because mm -hmm. the envisioning free time for yourself as a practice owner, especially accounting, especially in the United States, where it's also these tax seasons are very, very jam packed. And I know that many accountants dream of this life. So my last question was related to that. Like now that you have more free time, what's a hobby you enjoy doing and that you'd like to do more of? But I think you're already there. So yeah. you mentioned golf, you mentioned hiking. What's yeah, I just came back from a three-day backpack trip. Saw some beautiful waterfalls. The Sierra Nevadas in California are just stunning. You know, one thing I wanted to mention too is I mountain bike ride a lot. Yeah. And in August of 22, while I was mountain bike riding, I had a massive tree fall on me. No. And it actually broke my neck, my back, my ribs, my teeth. I had bleeding on the brain. I was sitting at home in a, in a back brace for months. Wow. And I have to say, this system really saved me because my business ran flawlessly without me. Well, I I was gone for almost six months other than taking an occasional phone call and my business ran without me. So how many CPAs out there could have that happen to them and their business run and clients all got serviced when a tree falls on you and breaks your back? So that's something to consider too on how valuable this is. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. This is huge, even bigger than saying that, yeah, of course, ha hobbies and having free time to enjoy family and golfing and bike riding. Mm -hmm. It's, of course, very important. But having your business survive after you being absent, other than, as you just said, mm -hmm. a couple of phone calls, it's amazing, really. And I'm and so I, like I said, I, and you're saying I just, I just spent a week with my wife on vacation. And I, then I came back and went immediately backpacking for three days. And I don't have a lot of phone calls to answer. I got a lot of emails because there's a lot of spam, but mm -hmm. the business clients all got handled while I was gone. And having the freedom to do that, it allows me to be able to work a lot longer and many, many more years because I'm not so burned out. Yeah. And that's amazing. That's what sustainability of a business is about. Having a system that runs for you mm -hmm. and works for you so you don't have to, basically. So thank you for sharing all these insights. I came here hoping to find a very good interview, but this was great. So I thank you so much for your time, for sitting down with me right after a three-day packing trip that I mm -hmm. can't imagine. You're very tired. And I'm so glad to see that you're perfect after that accident you had. Well, I'm still a crappy golfer. I was a crappy golfer before my back broke, and I'm still a crappy golfer. But, but you're I'm actually hitting the ball better than before my back broke. So I used to be out there golfing with my back brace on, and I could only do a three-quarter swing because my brace. And people would ask if that was a training aid to make me golf better. <laughs> no, I just had a very lethal accident. I just had a tree fall on me. Yeah. Oh, but so glad you're doing good. And yeah. I hope the golfing improves <laughs> i can highly recommend wise mentoring it's just been wonderful for me it's helped me focus on where i need to focus on my profit the fab five that they run is amazing you have to set that fab five up in your business and i really like the one-on-one -on -one coaching program because it allows you to really get into the nuts and bolts and you know a coach tells you things you need to do but don't want to and that's what you'll get and it's a really good program Thank you very much, Byron. And I hope that whoever sees this feels very inspired and can do the same as you did. So no. I'm not going to take more time from your day. So you may go ahead, Byron. Have a great July 1st. From when this comes out, it will be later. But thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. See you.